Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla, and today we are gonna talk all about the visual system. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the visual acuity of someone, like how well you can see, oh, I have 20-20 vision, woohoo, go me. But this is more from the sensory side, obviously, because we're talking about sensory, but this is more of the sensory side of things from visual perception to visual motor. We'll go into all of the details in this video. When we're talking about the visual system, we are talking about how the brain interprets what you see and then how you're able to react to what you see. So for example, if I can see that my friend across the room has a ball in their hand and they throw the ball to me, my visual system is gonna tell me the ball is coming towards you. My brain's gonna interpret that. I'm gonna, very, I'm gonna react by catching, hopefully catching the ball. So. <laughs> yeah. so what's interesting is there are seven different components of visual perception and we are going to briefly go over those here. The first one is visual memory. So this is being able to see something and remember and recall what you have seen. The next one is visual sequential memory, which is very similar to just visual memory, but instead you're remembering those specific sequences of events or places or people. The next one is form constancy, and this is a big one with reading and writing, so being able to identify the difference between a B and a D. The next one is visual figure ground, and this is being able to see things within a, vis a busy environment, so if you think about Where's Waldo? Oh, see, I think of the junk drawer. And the junk drawer. That's a big one. When you're going to the junk drawer, and yep. you have to find one little thing, a little quarter in there, and you can't because there is so much visual competition that you have to sort through. The next one is spatial relations, so being able to identify the connection between where you are in the environment versus where an object is or where multiple objects are in the environment, being able to identify where they are and their spatial relations. Next is visual closure, and this is being able to see part of something and know what it is when you only see part of it instead of the whole picture. The next one is visual discrimination, so being able to identify differences and similarities between different visual items in your environment. So maybe something between a letter if you're reading if you're reading a book and identifying which letters look the same and which letters look different, which numbers look the same, a six, a nine, identifying those. And then going along with visual perception, we have visual motor, which is also known as hand-eye coordination, and that's your ability to coordinate your visual system with your motor actions. And in addition, in addition, <laughs> the visual system is directly connected to your vestibular system, which is located in your inner ear. So we like to call this visual vestibular integration. So if you think about catching a ball, driving a car, you have to coordinate eye movements with head movements. And when there's challenges with visual vestibular integration, you see a lot of difficulties with movement activities, things like projected action sequencing, catching a ball while on a swing. We'll go into a little bit more here in a little bit. Actually, let's right now we'll okay. talk about let's we'll it. talk about what it looks like if your child is struggling with their visual system. So the first challenge we might see is if a child has difficulty with reading and writing. We might also see that they have difficulty organizing their space. They might have a hard time remembering places, people, things, just from a visual standpoint. They might dislike typical childhood activities such as mazes or word searches or books like Where's Waldo? They could also appear clumsy. They might bump into things. They might not know when to turn the corner and run into the wall. And then they're gonna have challenges with sports or ball skill activities. Okay. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. We will link a sensory preference checklist in the description if you want to learn a little bit more about what potential challenges you can see. But also we highly recommend that you seek out an occupational therapy evaluation if you are feeling concerned with your child's sensory processing and modulation abilities. Our videos, our podcast, our information is great, but nothing truly can replace that in-person therapy. Now let's dive into our six favorite activities to address the visual system. 
So the first activity we'd love to invite you to try is working on a skill called projected action sequencing. So either having a child sitting on a swing and throwing an item to a stationary target. Let's say you have a bean bag and you're throwing to a box. While they're swinging, they have to time when to throw that bean bag into the box. They can't overshoot it or undershoot it. That timing is really, really challenging for a lot of kiddos. It takes a lot of practice. And on the flip side, you can also work on the child being in a swing and throwing to a moving target or vice versa. They can be stationary and you can hold the target and be moving left and right, up and down. So that way they can try to coordinate their timing, when to throw. So that's a lot of that visual vestibular integration that we were talking about. That is one of my all time favorite activities yeah. to do ever. It's so much fun. The next activity is going to be using sensory bins to address the visual system. So if you have a sensory bin that's full of rice and beans, you're going to hide objects within that sensory bin, such as puzzle pieces or magnet letters and using their visual system, the child is going to have to find those items. And then maybe they also sort those items based on shape, size, or color. Another activity we love is called Zoom Ball. Now this not only works on visual tracking skills, it works on convergence and divergence. So being able to bring your eyes together and apart in a coordinated fluid movement pattern. Zoom Ball is super fun, super motivating, works on a lot of bilateral integration skills. So check it out. We'll link it in the description below if you haven't heard of Zoom Ball. And now we're just going to keep it really basic for this next idea, which is to do mazes and word searches, I spy games, where's Waldo. If your child really struggles with visual perception skills, they might not like these activities. So the challenge here is finding ways to make it fun and engaging and motivating. So incorporate these types of activities into obstacle courses, incorporate them into things that your child really likes to do, and then also keep it short and sweet. Don't try to have your child do these activities for five plus minutes. Maybe try one piece of the activity for one minute and then they get to take a break before they come back and do more. Love that idea. The next activity we're going to try is using a game like Spot It or those single player like Think Fun games. We'll link some options in the description. But the trick here is not just playing the game because that works on the visual system just in and of itself. But if you want to take it one step further and include some visual tracking activities, you can hold the cards in different locations, move them and have the child track those cards while they are playing the game. Another one of my favorites, actually. Yes. <laughs> All right, our last activity that we're going to give you today is super, super fun. So they're all fun. Uh, they are all fun. They are. This one. Is, we love them. <laughs> this one's really good, though. <laughs> so you're going to take a balloon. You're going to blow up a balloon. Or and have your child blow up. Or have your child blow up the balloon. And you're going to write all of the letters of the alphabet on the balloon. This or, is numbers. A, or numbers. Or numbers. <laughs> I'm just gonna this like is, nope, this is great. And all the ideas. And <laughs> having your child do these steps is also really, really great. We always recommend having your child involved with the setup of activities. Once your balloon has the letters or numbers or both written on it, you're going to have your child lay on their back next to a wall and using their feet, they are going to roll the balloon around on the wall to spell a word or to count the numbers in sequential order or to practice spelling words. This is a great one for spelling letter practice. Uh, also works on a lot of that neck flexion because they do have to lift their neck up off the ground while they're in that position, which can be challenging for a lot of kiddos. So you might have to facilitate them and help encourage them, put a pillow under their head if needed. But that's a fun one to work on those visual perceptual skills like we mentioned above. Holy cow, so many fun activities. We we're, love them. And we're gonna link our favorites down in the description so you can check them out and see which ones fit for your child to maybe purchase some new games for your child to try. Yep. If you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a video. We launch new videos every Tuesday. And what else? Make sure you're listening to our podcast, All Things Sensory by Heart Club. We launch a new podcast episode every Wednesday. And we have a lot of episodes on the visual system as well. 
which we will link those in the description below as well. So if you need some, <laughs> some podcasts to listen to in your spare time, go ahead and check those out to learn more about the visual system, as well as a podcast on is it visual or is it ADHD? Because that is another topic to look into. Yeah. And then just make sure you're following us on Instagram. We are at hardglaw underscore family as well as at all things sensory podcast. If you try any of these activities, tag us and share your video so we can share that with our community because it's so motivating to see families and practitioners and educators trying these activities out. I think that's it. Okay. So we'll talk to you next week. So visual, the visual, just kidding, we're not (laughs) stopping.